G'day ladies and gents. Well, you know why you're here. You've seen the title. It's time for some big boy breaks. Rightio, so you might be thinking, wow, Beavis, you've already swapped them over without even showing us how. Uh, not quite. I've only swapped over one side, and that's so that we can do a bit of science and compare them to my old Trackspeed Willwood setup that I was running previously. So I've thrown on one side, and let's be honest, the other side the uh, install on, on the, the other side is exactly the same. There's no point in me showing the same thing twice. That's just a waste of your time. So, I've pulled the old set off already. I want to do a bit of science and see how this compares to the new setup. Let me first explain a little bit about this kit and then about the new kit. So this is the old Trackspeed 11.75 inch rotor with, with the Willwood Dyna Pro 4. Uh, generally considered one of the biggest and ideally best kits you can get out of the US for the sort of bolt-on for a Miata uh, at a reasonable price. You're looking at about a thousand US dollars roughly. Uh, the, they work okay. Uh, pads are relatively easily accessible as are rotors provided you're in the US. Here in Australia the rotors are a little bit harder to get but there are places that sell them. Um, worst case we can bring them in from overseas. The rotor itself is quite large in diameter, about the biggest you can fit under a 15 inch wheel, but the thickness is not that great. It's only a roughly 20 millimeters in thickness, or about 0.8 inches, I think. And the caliper is capable, but it's not nothing outstanding. It works okay. I've never really had issues with the caliper. They are a little bit a little bit simple, but at least these are stronger than the Dyna Lights um, and that sort of thing. So the Dyna Pro is definitely a superior caliper in that regard. Uh, pad size is a bit smaller than these, and the pad thickness or the material thickness isn't that huge, so you burn through your pads fairly quickly. All that said, the actual mass or weight of that unit is slightly lighter than the OEM stuff, so you're actually making a weight saving. However, that means you're also sort of losing thermal mass. When you cr create heat in your brakes, you need that heat to go somewhere. When the brakes are small and light, they don't, they can't handle it as well. Which brings me on to this new kit. So this is an AP caliper with a DBA rotor, an Aussie rotor. The rotor is super accessible here in Australia. Pretty much any super cheap Repco off the shelf parts shop will sell them. Uh, easily accessible online. There's a bunch of different sizes and they're sort of in a Commodore size rotor, I think. That said, it is a two-piece, so the, the hat has been specifically made for the MX-5 uh, four-lug hub. There's also a custom bracket to adapt the AP caliper to the MX-5 hub as well. But other than that, it's really very similar to the Trackspeed kit in sort of components-wise anyway. The caliper is really stiff and huge and sturdy, but still fits under a 15-inch wheel, which is really good. That is a 15 by 9 It fits under some 15 by 8s as well. I can't tell you which wheel it will or won't fit because I only know what wheels it will fit by the ones I've got here with me. But that said, real beefy. Um, the most critical thing, I think, for this is that the pad thickness and the material thickness that you've got to burn through is a lot bigger than the Willwood. The pad diameter uh, size or pad surface is much larger. And the rotor is a lot thicker, at nearly 28 mil, I think, thick. So a lot larger than the old Willwood, Willwood rotor, which is, I think, a significant difference. I'm hoping it'll really improve braking performance, longevity, and sort of lasting the, the high heat, high power stops. The fact of the matter is, I was kind of exceeding what these Willwoods could put up with over a number of laps. Eventually, they just got too hot and carked it. Now with all that said, this new AP kit is bigger and heavier. And I guess that's the first bit of science we want to do today is have a look at how they compare. So I've pulled the old kit off and I've got the other new kit sitting over in the box. So we can do a bit of a comparison. So let's go have a squeeze. So I suppose it's prudent that we go over all the parts that come with the kit. Obviously, take what you see here and duplicate it. This is one side. So obviously you've got the AP caliper. I'll uh, put a image up here now somewhere showing you the exact part number if you're curious you've got the adapter bracket made by Bosnjak or Bos Bosnjak whatever I don't know how to pronounce his name in Sydney he makes this to adapt this to fit the MX-5 you've got your DBA rotor I'll again put a part number here somewhere so you can look up the exact part number if you're curious with a again Bosnjak hat this hat uh, a point of fact for you, you didn't fit my car originally because of the hub size. I had to go and do 
uh, and the, the custom hub that I run, or the, the um, aftermarket hub, I had to go and get it remachined to bore out this hole here because they put a cap over it, which meant that as you put it on the hub, uh, the sort of stub nose part of the hub poked through and it wouldn't let the, the rotor sit flush. So instead of capping this off, I had to get them to machine it out to the standard MX-5 bore. I don't know why they did that. Every other brake kit I've seen, including the old Willwood, that's just an open hole. So it makes sense to just leave it open, but they tried to get fancy and in the end it made more work and cost for everyone. Moving on. Uh, I've got a set of pads. You can get many different types and sizes of pads. I've opted for the DTC Hawks because that's what I enjoy using and I've used them for a while. And the last thing we've got is the brake lines and a fitting to adapt the line to suit the new caliper. That's it. It's all relatively straightforward and simple and the install is really quite simple as well. Uh, compare that to the old kit. Same deal. Rotor, hat, caliper, the bracket to mount it and then there's a set of pads it's literally the same thing on the brake line it's just uh i feel like that all just looks sturdier even though logically and sort of numbers wise it's kind of similar when you put the two side by side there's really no similarity at all let's see how the weight compares radio i've got my heavy set scale because the kitchen scale was too weak to put up with the weight that we're going to deal with it here now so First up, our track speed rotor weighs in at exactly five kilograms. Compare that with the new DBA AP kit, and we're looking at 7.5. A 50% increase in mass. I didn't expect that. Wow. So that is literally 50% heavier than the old unit. Now for the caliper. So this is the Willwood caliper with a set of pads with a line, with the bracket, and all the bolts, 2.4 kilograms. So all up, that's 7.4 kilos for the Willwood kit, albeit slightly used. Now let's compare that to the AP kit. So we've got the caliper, the bracket with its mounting bolts, the brake line, the fitting, and a pair of pads. And we're looking at four kilograms all up. In total, the AP kit is, what's that, 11.5 kilos. A much more significant kit, much beefier, everything is heavier, even though the numbers kind of sound the same, instead of weight is always bad on a race car. But fundamentally, the brakes are like the most critical component of a race car. So I don't see why you would ever argue that they're too big, particularly for my application, I don't, I cannot see how this is a bad decision to make. And the last bit of science I wanted to show you was the difference in rotor. So you can see, diameter wise, they're pretty much exactly the same. They're both about 298 or so mil, 296 I think for this, or 11.75, this is officially rated at. Um, this has di directional vanes. This is the um, Spec 37 rotor, so it's a bit higher spec than the generic Wheelwood rotor. But the thickness um, of, of the, the actual rotor is significantly uh, more beefy on the AP kit. So that DBA rotor, much, much larger than this. Uh, okay, one other thing we should mention is the hat thickness because this one is much thicker than this or than the OEM one. So let me get my verniers out and I'll show you what I mean. So what I've got here is an OEM NB Sport rotor, the track speed rotor, the AP kit. And what I wanna show you here is the difference in the thickness of the actual rotor hat area because that actually influences your wheel offset. And the fact is that this factory OEM size rotor is much thinner here than this, uh, than this AP kit, which means your wheel is actually going to decrease offset and be further out um, from the hub. Also means that you need thicker wheels, uh, longer wheel studs, which in my case is fine. I've got that already on my car. If you're buying this kit and you don't have that and you go to put these on, you'll go, oh shit, I've got no way to actually bolt my wheel to the car because the studs won't protrude far enough through this hat. So let me show you the numbers. I've got my verniers here. We'll boot those up. 7.2 millimeters or so roughly on the OEM rotor. On the track speed hat, we're looking at about 10.5 millimeters. And most significantly on this AP hat, it's 
20.5 millimeters. That is an extra 10 millimeters offset from this. That actually gives you an extra 10 mil offset on your wheel. Keep that in mind. You may all of a sudden realize that your suspension geometry is different or that your wheel is poking out of your guard because it's an extra 10 mil further out than it was with this old brake or an extra three mil ahead of what this one was as well. So 13 mil thicker than this old rotor here. So something to keep in mind when you uh, consider this kit. With all that said, it's time to install it on the car. Now with install, it's really quite simple. Brakes aren't that hard to do. And this kit is no different to any other brake kit or even the OEM brakes. They're really straightforward to install. It's all pretty much the same. Uh, in terms of tools you'll need, basic stuff, some sockets and some spanners. For the most part, that's about it. Uh, for the Wilwood kit, I do need an extra couple of hex keys to be able to open some of the sort of special bits and pieces. You'll also want a breaker bar to undo things like your wheel nuts and some brake cleaner, clean your rotor off. But other than that, it's really straightforward. Let's get straight to work. Start with the rotor and I bolt it on so that it's solid and it's not going to move around. Next up is our bracket that go to go in under here. The top side is the side with the bleed nipples, not the side with the joiner bar, so pretty straightforward that goes in there. But you've also got your pads, you can put those in later, they don't need to go in just yet. Get them both started before we tighten anything up too hard. They both seem to be going in okay. On the back of the caliper goes our brake adapter fitting. The crash washer goes on the caliper side as does the fat side of this adapter. The smaller side is an AN type fitting that points outwards. We're going to take out the little yellow dust cap, this new guy, and then he tightens up with a 13 mil spanner. And we grab our brake line. Thread him on. Unfortunate fact is you're always going to lose some fluid doing this stuff. Not a lot you can do about that. You've got to bleed your brakes afterwards. It's just a uh, yeah, fact of the matter, I suppose. Now, theoretically, that's it. Give everything a clean, particularly where brake fluid has gotten. So I've got a bunch on the uh, suspension arm there, and there's a bit on the back of the caliper, so I'll give that a clean. Uh, and then you'll also want to make sure you clean off your rotor to get any grease and stuff off before you put your pads in. So I'll do that now as well. And of course, don't be silly. You've got to do the back side of the rotor as well. It might be easier to do it before you install it on the car, but uh, look, it doesn't bother me too much. And you can see how much grimy stuff comes off. So well worth doing that. There we go. So our pads slot straight in. Super simple. And then this is an anti rattle plate that comes with the caliper. This is the pin that holds everything in place. And then there's the bolt that holds the pin in. A couple of other positives with this kit. It has nice big bleed nipples, not the little pissy ones that are on the uh, Willwood kit. The Willwoods are these tiny little, I think they're a quarter inch spanner sized uh, bleed nipple which is just too small for my liking so these are nice and sizable also I feel like the fitting on the back of the brakes here is a bit better than the style that was used on the wheelwood setup but it's a bit of a much of a muchness uh, the bolts and the lug lugs are all metric rather than imperial on the track speed stuff so that's kind of nice being able to stick with metric um, downsides with this kit though zero instructions at all there's no detail on torque ratings or how to install or anything so I guess you could use this video as a guide for you, but uh, yeah, zero info from the manufacturers or the designers on how to actually install the whole kit on a car, which is a little disappointing. Now I should also mention I purchased this kit from V-Sport here in Australia. They're located in Sydney, I, do, I believe. Uh, I paid about $2,300 for the whole lot, that's Aussie dollars, and as far as I understand, they're the ones that sort of built or designed the kit, put it all together with the help of Bosnjak to do the sort of machining work. 
That said, communication was pretty terrible. I emailed them and then it wasn't until about three weeks later when I sent follow-up emails saying, hello, what's going on? Did they eventually get back to me? I asked for some specifics on pads, rotors, caliper sizes so I could get an understanding on the kit in more detail because they didn't have any information on them to make sure that they were bigger than the Willwood kit I was running previously. They were real sketchy on details, they weren't clear. I asked for uh, rotor thickness because I wanted to make sure that it was going to be bigger than the old rotor and it took multiple emails just to say that's ask that simple question and actually get some information that was useful so I could understand if this kit was right for me. The lack of information was real disappointing and I had to press for it which is quite frustrating. And then also I had the issue with the hub not fitting as I mentioned earlier. That said, when, uh, as soon as I tried to fit it up, I was like, oh yeah, this is clearly not gonna fit over the hub. Why they didn't just machine out the hole as a clear hole, I don't understand. It would have just made life easier for literally everyone. Nonetheless, I emailed them and fairly quickly sent the thing back. They remachined it, sent it back to me. I did have to pay for the cost of the shipping to send it back, but they did all the work and sorted it out fairly quickly and without charging anything extra. So look, I'll take that one. But Communication was pretty pretty terrible. They don't list these on their website for sale as far as I'm aware. I had to kind of reach out to them. Luckily someone mentioned to me that this kit exists, so I was able to kind of find out about it. Um, why they don't list it as a unit on their website, I don't know. Maybe because people like me ask too many questions, but I want to know the information so I can make sure it's right for me. That's an AP aftermarket kit that pretty much the most expensive kit I've seen sort of off the shelf in Australia and potentially in the world for that is still accessible. I'm sure there's bigger, wilder kits out there for MX-5s, but this is one of the more high-end, pricier ones. So people are gonna to wanna to know a bit of stuff. Now I'm just gonna send $2,200 to someone and just hope that it works. I, yeah, anyway, a little disappointing, but nonetheless, the kit looks like it's really good. Um, so I guess it was worth it, perhaps. We'll see. And well there you have it, the install is all done. Big brake kits or even a standard brake upgrade, really not that hard. Give it a go, it's, um, it's definitely accessible to pretty much anyone out there. Now keep in mind, while I've mentioned that I've upgraded from the Wilwood kit to this bigger AP kit, that does not mean by at all that the Wilwood kit is no good. It's definitely a good piece of kit, definitely for the price range. This thing's kind of a pricey unit, let's be honest. Um, so the Wilwoods work, they're just not quite as big as these guys and I feel like these will be more capable for my application. The Wilwoods were just starting to run out of juice. I had them for a few years, I went through a few sets of consumables, so it's not like I didn't give them a go. They had it, they had their fair shot and it's, uh, it's just time for me to try something different. Nonetheless, if you've got them on your car, don't think that because I've made this video you've got to suddenly sell them or pull them off. That's definitely not what I'm trying to portray here. With all that in mind, don't forget, it's time to now bleed these brakes. I'll go and do that without you having to sit there and watch me do it. It's not a fun job. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was insightful and information-wise, you got some stuff out of this because I tried to do my best to get a bit of science in here as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Ta.